Hello, Yeshua Network. Nathan Wheeler here. You know, I've uh, I've been basically praying for the last 48 hours, last maybe 24 hours. Well, really 48 hours, though. You know, we I didn't get to do the entire Bible read through, which, like many of you, I too obviously miss very much. I know Alex misses very much, and we miss you and our fellowship with you very much. We also miss the Holy Ghost that flows. When we get to do the Bible study, we, we miss the love and the, the camaraderie and the family feeling that we have here at Yeshua Network. We miss the fact that you guys are such a blessing to us and uh, we need it. You know, I don't know if you need Yeshua Network. Many of you may have other networks. You may have other Facebook pages. You may have a church, a congregation, a Bible study. Maybe even you have blood family that you can call up at any time or maybe you, you, the family you live with in your house is a, is a family that loves God and you get to fellowship and talk to them about God. I mean that, you, I don't know if you know if you have that, you are so blessed. Um, I myself am a single guy <laughs> and uh, so I don't have any family, but uh, it, like immediate family and then my other family, they're far away. So I don't have anybody I get to fellowship with except really you guys and Alex and, and my friends. Uh, and I cherish, I cherish every moment I get to fellowship and to talk about Yeshua and to glorify his name and to talk about the salvation and, and the happiness that comes from, from having that salvation, right? And over the last 48 hours, I've been praying with so much negative energy, with so much negative things all over the internet right now, all over media, television, newspapers, magazines, people's language and talks at coffee shops. You walk into a coffee shop and it's there's just negative talk. I mean, you can overhear it everywhere you go. You're standing at a gas station and you're overhearing it. And I pray, Lord, what can I possibly say in a time like this? And I'm looking to the scripture. Do you, have you ever, have you ever thought to yourself, this thing that I'm experiencing in the modern world, I can't find an example of how to deal with this in the Bible. Have you ever, have you ever had that happen? D does that make sense? I hope that does. Am I, I know I'm not the only one who does that, right? Like you see like a, a modern problem and you think to yourself, you're like, ah, this was so not addressed in the Bible. Like I need your guidance right now, Lord. And I, you know, you're not speaking directly to me at the moment to like try to help and bless the people. But where, where in the gospel can I go to? To, to find the path that you would take in this scenario. And I thought to myself, these shootings, which is what I'm going to talk about briefly, but not about the shootings. Instead, I'm going to talk about the thing that I wish more people were talking about. The thing that more believers were talking about right now as everybody else is fighting and bickering over all the reasons why a shooting happened. All the reasons of how to stop shootings from happening in the future. That's what everybody is bickering about. And I'm sitting here praying, Lord, what can I do? What can I say to bless your sheep? What can I do to feed your sheep, Lord, to, to give them the word that you've actually given? Not the word of Nathan Wheeler, not the word of, of, of my perception on, on reality or my, my take on this matter, but what is it that you have said to us in these circumstances that are this crazy and dark and sad? It's just sad. It's more than anything, it's sad. And when people get sad and fearful, they get angry. Because anger is easier to deal with than fear. It's easier to be angry and, and, to, and to have that emotional bubbling up of anger than to allow yourself to stay in a place of fear and trembling and overwhelm and being a victim. But the thing is, the thing is, is that the Bible does address this level of fear. The Bible does address this level of don't be a victim when the world comes against you. When everything falls apart and doesn't make any sense and it seems like there's absolutely no way out of this meth, this, this mess, <laughs> meth is a mess as well, but there's no way out of this mess. There is light. Not for everybody, but there's light for you because you're not of the world. And because you knew me, Yeshua is telling the apostles, I'm going to go die. 
I'm going to die and I'm going to be away from you and you're not going to have me around anymore. And you're not going to have that comforter. You're not going to have that person who's always with you, who always answers every one of your problems, where you can just, Peter can walk up at any time and be like, Lord, what do we do now? Lord, what do we do now? What do we do now? How do we solve this? How do we solve that? That person's sick. What do we do about it, Lord? Right? They always have daddy around, right? And it's always great when daddy's around. And he says that. He says, well, that's why it's so amazing when Martha pours oil on his feet and his hands and his hair and everything, because he's saying, I'm not going to always be here for Martha to do this. And he's trying to warn them there is going to come a season where you're going to freak out and you're going to feel all alone and you're going to be abandoned and I won't be there answering every little nick and cranny and solving every footstep for you. And he tells them how to deal with it. He says, you are the light of the world. You are going to carry me inside of you. You're going to have with you the Holy Spirit and that spirit's going to shine and it's going gonna, it's gonna to spill on to people. And it's going to, to touch them in the way that I've touched you 12. You 12 and all the others who get to walk around with me and feel me and touch me and, and pray with me and break bread and drink with me. You 12 have gotten to experiencing me. But now I'm going to live inside you and I'm going to make you me. I'm going to make you the carriers of me. And they went out. 12 people went out. And me and you are having this conversation today and having our entire Bible read through every Sunday here and, and having fellowship in the way that we have because of those 12. And the answer is the same to us today when we see dark times. He is in us. And we bear that light that he gave us, that he gave us from the cross, that he gave us from the resurrection, the promise. And when the world is dark, ladies and gentlemen, and, and it wants to pull you in so bad, and all the gossip and the lies and the bickering and the fighting, we're all made of flesh still. The Bible says we will suffer and we will fight this good fight as Paul calls it. It's a good fight because we're winning the fight. If we don't submit to the flesh, we're winning the good fight, right? It became very clear to me that the apostles experienced a true dread and a true sense of loss, so much that they saw their Savior die on a cross. They saw a guy who could walk on water, dying slowly on a cross, and there was nothing any of them could do about it. And the despair and the helplessness. Listen to what I'm saying. Do you feel helpless? Maybe not because it was your family that got shot. Maybe it was not because it was your family where a crime was done against them. But maybe you're the person with the gun wanting to go do a crime. Maybe you're the person who's out there thinking right now that the only way for the world to change is for you to do some crazy horrific thing and go shoot up innocent people you've never met before. Or maybe you're somebody who's watching that on TV and you're thinking, what can I do to get my government involved to protect me, get my police involved to protect me, my Congress involved to protect me, my neighbors involved to protect me and my family. And you're thinking of all these things that you could possibly do, and let's face it, many of us are coming up with a big fat zero, a big fat, there's nothing I can do. I'm one person, even me and my family are a couple people. I'm not the super richest person in the world. I'm not the president of the United States or a congressman or senator. I'm not any of these things. So what can I do? That's the lie continuing on. That's a lie in us that we've received, that we're embracing. And what Yeshua told them is that when that, when that happens, when you get to that dark place, and the world is all around asking, where do we go? How do we turn from this darkness? How do we take this very bad place that we're in? Yeshua has left the world. Yeshua has died on the cross. His body lays lifeless in a tomb that we can't even go near because there's guards. We can't even, we can't even love on him and, and, and be with his body and cherish him and do the things we're supposed to do because the guards won't allow us near him. They had lost all hope for a moment. Peter denied him three times his hope was so in despair. He was so in despair. So if you think that the Bible doesn't address despair or this level of sadness or this sense of loss that the world is feeling when these, these crazy tides of badness happen, you're wrong. 
It does address it. The apostles went through it first before we went through it. And Yeshua told them the exact same thing he would tell us today. At this very moment. You are the light of the world. You carry me. You see? Christians, believers, my brothers and sisters. If the world is dark and it's only going to get darker because the devil's working overtime for he knows he have but a short while, right? That means we have to crank it up even more. It means that we have to love our enemy even more. It means that if you are a friend of somebody who seems a little weird or somebody who speaks a little evil or maybe they have a blog or a video that they make and it's, it's about how they want to go and kill people or they want to hurt people. I understand the natural tendency is to push that person away and separate yourself from their life. But you carry with you the real solution to the problem. The real solution to the problem for a broken mind and a broken soul is not a law. It's not a gun. It's not a bullet flying through the air. It's the cross. It's a guy named Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And it's the Holy Spirit that he gave us when he rose again and Pentecost happened and he ascended onto heaven. It is the only thing that can heal a soul. It is the only thing that can make a bad person good. It can make a murderer like Paul who murdered many people for being believers and turn them into the person who taught us more about Yeshua than anybody else in history. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it may be hard to see how much you're worth to this world. I know it may be really hard to see how much power you have in you. You may be living in the middle of nowhere. You maybe only have one friend. Maybe you feel that you're the person without the friend. But that's why this medium that we share, this fellowship that we have, you bless me. And I've said this before in other videos, but if I'm your only friend... And the only thing that we have is what we converse right here through through chat. Know that every one of your chats are seen. Every one of your comments you're making right now, I see them. And they bless me. They bless me to know I'm not alone. They bless me to know that I have brothers and sisters out there who carry the same light. And that together we shine brighter. We have hashtag be the light every month for this very reason. That's how it started. Somebody in my company knew a, had a family member, a cousin who died in Vegas at a shooting. That's how this all started. And look at the blessing that's become. But it didn't become a blessing because of me. It didn't become a blessing because of one person. It became a blessing because 3,000 of you, yes, 3,000 of you have participated in hashtag be the light on the 22nd of every month. How amazing is that? 3,000 people. But it started with one person, Yeshua. And it's only going to get bigger and it's only going to get better. And all I'm saying is, is that there is a solution. We are the solution. You watching this video are the solution to the problem. The gun is not the problem. The laws are not the problem. And the leadership of your government are not the problem. And I can prove it to you biblically. The leader of the government that Yeshua lived in, his name was Caesar. And he wasn't exactly a good guy. And that didn't stop Yeshua from spreading the love and putting the gospel forward and saving souls. It didn't stop the 12 guys who followed him. All but one got killed in a horrible, brutal way. And they had bad leadership. They had bad laws. They had bad people doing bad things and taking advantage of innocent people. But they carried that light. And ladies and gentlemen, today, 2,000 years later, me and you are fellowshipping and praising for our salvation because what they did worked because what they had in them is stronger than what's in the world and that is the Holy Spirit it's very real it's very powerful and in actuality it's the most powerful thing the world has ever seen it is the very same Spirit of God and so if you're looking for a solution outside of yourself to the mayhem that's going on in the world the only solution outside of yourself is Yahweh, which wants to come into you and use you as the vehicle to be the blessing. We will not see change 
and people who want to do crazy things like this until the body of Christ rises up and unifies and becomes such a loud voice of positivity and such a loud voice of unity and, and testimony. We must constantly testify that the Holy Spirit is real, has made each and every single one of us a new creation. And only then will the person out there who is in such a dark place that they're picking up a gun and wanting to go shoot people will think to themselves, well, that person talks a lot like how I talk. That person has a very similar story to how I felt. That's how I feel right now. And my only other choice is to go shoot all these people. But maybe I might, I might want to pick up that Bible. I might want to tune into that video on Sunday. I might want to listen to what this person says about receiving the Holy Spirit and the joy and the happiness and the peace that comes with it. How powerful is that? Don't look to a law. Don't look to a person to blame. Don't look outside of yourself. Because within you, my brothers and sisters, who are right here with us, right here on Yeshua Network, 2.7 million of you. It started with one guy who then became 12 guys, who then became billions of souls. And right here at Yeshua Network, we are an army. We are an army of people who understand love. We here at Yeshua Network, I've seen it all over the comments. I see it every month on the 22nd. Within you, whether you believe you have it or not, I've seen it in your post. I've seen it in your words. I've seen it in, 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 in your reaction to hearing the gospel. You have the very same thing in you, ladies and gentlemen, watching this video right here on Yeshua Network. You have the very same thing in you that the apostles had in them. It is not diluted, it is not different, and it is not weaker today than it was then. In fact, the Bible prophesizes that those in the end times will do more than what they did in their time. So that means we're about to rev up. It means that right now, maybe this is the message that's going to click that light bulb on in your head and make you realize, you 2.7 million who are watching this video and the people you're going to share it with, we are the army of God and we carry with us the sword of his word and we carry with us the armor of his, of his spirit and the shield that defends us is his will. And I am telling you, there is a group of people on this earth who can change the world, who can change a soul from going and doing the horrific deeds that have been done all over this nation in the last 48 hours. And it is you right here, right now. And I am not lying to you. You know that what I'm telling you is the truth. And I go against every single demon and devil that's trying to say you're not enough. And that you're not carrying the Holy Spirit enough. And that you're not beautiful enough, smart enough, wise enough, educated enough. That's why we're a body of Christ. We have tools, videos, images, scripture right here. Right here at Yeshua Network. If there's anything that you lack... Somebody else in this community has it. And if you're a person who's never found a community of believers who, don't, who won't judge you, who actually want to hear your pain, who actually want to hear what you're going through, guess what? It exists. I don't know if it ever existed before in your world, but it exists now. You can go and check it out at facebook.com forward slash Yeshua official. Yeshua is just the, real, the Hebrew name of Jesus Christ. That, that's it. It's not a cult. We're not like a special division. We're not a special denomination. It's just, it's just a name. I, I, it's the Hebrew name. I like it. It put it on my heart to call this, this the Yeshua Network because everything in my life is his. So I'm not going to call it the Nathan Wheeler Network. So I called it his network, Yeshua. That's all. That's the name because it's his name. And so that's it. That's who we are. And that's what these people are here at Yeshua Network. They're, they're these raw no fluff, no judgmental, no, no hate. I haven't seen hate on this page in so long. I haven't seen discourse on this page in so long. My, my heart is so filled with the joy to see the people that the Lord has brought together. And, and, and some of you have even said that this page came to you at a time when you had no faith. My videos came to you when you had no faith and now you tell me, you confess on the comments in these videos that you are so bursting with faith that you're having a problem not talking about God. How crazy is that? But I'm promising you, you 
are going to do the same thing in other people's lives, and you must. It's not a choice. It's vital. It's vital to the soul of humanity. It's vital to the soul of the earth. It's vital to the salvation of the millions and billions of other souls that live on this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, the people in your life, the people you work with, your family and your friends, they are not greater than you. They are not more conquering than you. Because in you lives the Holy Spirit and greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You have to realize that you don't trust on your own means. You don't trust on your own knowledge. You don't trust on your own talents. You don't trust on your own wisdom. Before I launched this video, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to say. I had no plan. I just prayed and it was on my heart that now is the time. And when I turned on the camera, I just started speaking from my heart the things that he showed me about what the apostles went through. And that's the message. Even this, this, this level of despair and strange little horrible things that, that we're experiencing in, the, in this modern technologically advanced world. Yeah, the Bible covers it. To detail. To the point. Even the murderer is going to be changed into an apostle. But we who carry his light, we who he chose to duplicate himself in, and he said would do more than he did, we have to believe he is not lying to us, guys. Yeshua never lied. But we think that he lied in that one sentence. So many of us think that he lies that one sentence. Whether, whether we want to admit it or not, when it comes down to it, we think he's lying. When he says that those who are in the end time, those who come later, those who have not seen but believe will do more than I did. That's the one thing that many believers really deep in their heart think Yeshua is lying about. He doesn't mean me. He means everybody else, sure, but he doesn't mean me. But he does. He says to each and every single one who believes in me and believes on those who have believed on me who's heard the word of these 12 and the word that they will share and so on and so forth until the end of the world. It's a promise from Yeshua. And he cannot tell a lie. Only the devil tells the lie that you're not good enough, that the Holy Spirit's not in you enough. What does that even mean? You have it in you. I've seen it in you. Your comments I'm reading right now are so beautiful. Your words and your perspective and the way that you here carry your faith, I'm telling you, you inspire me like I cannot, I cannot vocalize it. I, if I could write a poem or a song, I would, but I, there's no words for how much the Holy Spirit moves in you into me. And we need to start doing that to the people who aren't here. We need to start doing that to more folks who, who are in the dark. And our outreach has got to grow. And I'm encouraging you. I'm, I'm doing it every day. I'm, I'm obviously doing it every day. But I'm trying to do it even more. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to step outside my comfort zone even more. And I'm trying specifically, ladies and gents, to be more aware of the people in real life not on the internet, the people in real life who the Lord has put around me. Because if I can bring him into every conversation, even if it's just to show that shimmer of light of hope, that shimmer of light of goodness and love and joy and peace, the fruits of the Spirit, grace, mercy, these things. If I can carry grace and mercy into a conversation, it doesn't mean I'm preaching the gospel and shoving it down their throat. It means that I'm exuding an energy that the world's not feeling right now. It means that I'm bringing something to the conversation and the, and the, and the meeting that I'm having or whatever that the world is not used to. Right now, the world's used to anger, hatred, uh, fear, sadness, aggression. So when a person walks in the room... And, and demonstrates the love and stillness and peace of the Lord. I'm telling you, I've witnessed it. They go, what is with you? What is that about you that's so different? Why? What is this, Nate, you got going on? And then I get to tell them then when they ask, I got Yeshua. 
and I know that he is in control and I know that he's in me. And my only wish is I wish I would have met these shooters. I wish I would have gotten to meet every single one of these murderous people before they became murderers. That's what I wish. I wish I would have been able to sit with them and share with them the good word that I feel that maybe somebody just didn't share with them. Or maybe they just didn't share it in the right way. Or, or something. I don't know. But I know that I carry in me. I carry in me the power to change such a person. Because I know that Paul got changed that way. And I know that you here in this, this fellowship on Facebook, I know I've seen it. You carry it with you as well. I hope that you believe what I'm saying because guys, there's so many of us and when we bind together, the Lord becomes a synergized power and we can be a blessing onto so many people who, who, who need it and don't even know they need it. So I'm encouraging you, don't get mad at your Congress, don't get mad at your senators, don't get mad at your presidents, don't get mad at the shooter. I know that's really, really hard. I know it's really hard. But Yeshua loved even the murderer on the on the cross, the thief on the cross, the murderer. He loved everybody. Paul was a murderer. A murderer. Not, not like a thought about it. He murdered Christians. And Yeshua used him in the might. He wrote most of the New Testament. That's how much power we have in us. But but it's not it's not what the conversation is right now. The conversation is point the blame, point the finger. And, and move to, to control the earth, control the flesh, control the, the physical things I can touch. If I can put this over here, then I won't get hurt by it anymore. If I can put him over here, I won't get hurt by him anymore. And the truth of the matter is you need to be thinking about if I can bring the light of Christ into the situation, the whole situation is going to change. If I can bring the light of Christ into the person, if I can spill that ghost onto the person, the person is going to be changed in the flash of an eye. They're going to become a new creation. They're not even going to remember what their old life was like. They're not going to even remember what it is to hate like that ever again. Ever since I've been reborn in Yeshua, ever since I got the Holy Ghost, I, I, I've never had the kind of hate I had when I was a kid. And it seems like such a long lifetime ago. Alex and me talk about this all the time. It seems like we can't even remember being those people. There's no reason why there is, isn't anybody on the planet that can't happen to. But the reason why it's not happening to them is because there's not enough of us blessing them. There's not enough of us understanding the power we hold in us. And I'm telling you today, just in case the devil's lying in your ear, you have that power. Take a look at your neighbors. Have your kids sit down, talk to them. Show them this video. Let them understand that being cool at school is no longer cool. Matching with all the other kids, making fun of the kids, being, being a bully with the other kids, that's not cool anymore. The cool thing now is, is to be the different person, the person who leads the way, the person who paves a new path. That shows what it is to love. That's the cool thing. One friend. One friend can change somebody from being a murderer. I honestly believe that. Because my one friend, Yeshua HaMashiach, he changed me. In ways I could never ever communicate to you. He made me a brand new person. And every single person who's a believer on this network. Yeshua Network on Facebook right here right now. Yeshua Official. We all have that friend. And we need to introduce him to as many people as we possibly can with love, grace, mercy, and understanding, slow and compassionate, slow to anger and compassionate. Anyways, I'm so amped. I'm so amped because when I asked the Lord to show me scripture that pertained to this situation that we're experiencing, my mind running through the scripture in my mind, I, I got nothing. But then when he showed me how the apostles must have felt when they saw him die on the cross, I realized, nope, the Bible truly covers every situation we will ever encounter. Despair, feeling totally lost, total anguish, confusion. These are all things that were totally addressed by Yeshua himself. We need to share that with people, guys. We need to be the light of the world. It's not a choice. It's a commandment and it's vital. 
Be blessed. Be the blessing. I hope this video blesses you. And more importantly, honestly, I know you're already blessed because I know you here are already carrying the light of Christ because I see it. I hope that all of us can somehow expand and start reaching out to those who don't have it. And we can, we, we can be the people who could stop that person from pulling that trigger again. That is why hashtag be the light is there. Thanks, guys. I don't know what else to say except that I love you and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to end this on a prayer. If you join me, I would really appreciate it, especially if you're live. It's 100 people, 105 people right now. If you all join me from all around the world, hallelujah, I know the Holy Spirit is going to be with us and I know this prayer is going to be very strong. Hallelujah. Almighty Jehovah, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, I lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ, the ones who you have directly allowed me to fellowship with right here on Facebook on Yeshua Official and Truth Me Free Ministries and hashtag Be The Light. You have allowed me, Lord, to experience an unbelievable group of people. People that I am so blessed that not only will I get to know them in paradise with you, but people that I got to know and I got to fellowship with here on earth. I don't know why I get so lucky. I don't know why I got to be friends with these people and why they consider me friend. I don't know how, how or what I could have ever done to get that blessing, Lord, but I'm super grateful for them. But Lord, I ask right now, a prayer I've never even thought of to pray before, and I'm so grateful you put it on my heart. I ask that I could share my friends with others, Lord. I ask that I get to share these beautiful people who carry your beautiful light with more people that don't know you, that don't know your light, that haven't tasted your, your beauty and your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would put in every single one of us an evangelical heart, a heart that isn't about going out and shoving the gospel down people's people's throat. It's not what I'm praying for, Lord. And I know that's not in your heart for us to do. But instead for us to go out and carry your love, your light, your grace, your mercy, your joy, your peace. Oh, that hope that you are able to give, Lord. It's like nothing else. I mean, I, I never understood, Lord, but that hope. Let that hope pour from all of us so much that people are like, wow, when you walked into the room, that anger, that frustration, that, that aggression that I had boiling in my blood, when you walked into the room, it dissolved. It dissolved like a vapor. Lord, I ask for you to anoint every single person right here watching this video in real time and after who watch this, Lord. Let that anointing fall on them and bring with them the very ability to evaporate fear, anxiety, and hatred when they walk into a room and meet somebody. And may that Holy Spirit pour into those people, whether they want it or not, so they can at least taste the hope, at least taste it and have a chance, Lord, of getting to know you. Because you're it. You're the solution to every problem humanity has ever had and will ever have. And all we can do is give you away freely as you freely gave on to us. So Lord, give us that moment in people's life who need it. Give us that moment to be that giver, <laughs> that giver of you. Hallelujah. Anoint my brothers and sisters in Yeshua's name. Amen. Man. I love you guys too. <laughs> it's just that there's two feelings I'm having. I want to share before I log off the video. I know it's a long video. When are my videos ever short, right? Two feelings I'm having. One is how sad I am to think that there there's no other option in somebody's mind than to do these really foolish things. Things that, that don't that don't change the world in any way, shape, or form in the way that they think it might. 
Of course, I'm sad for that. And I'm sorry, I'm sad for the families that one day went grocery shopping or were having a drink at a bar and their whole life was ruined and destroyed and they lost somebody. Of course, my heart is broken for that. But the other reason for my tears, they're tears of joy. They're tears of joy, guys, because I realized, wow, I'm not that guy. I'm not that person who has that level of despair. I'm not that person who's lost. Wow. How blessed are we? Because we're not that person. The devil is a worm, and we have a roaring lion in us. Let's unleash that lion, folks. We're stepping up our game here at Yeshua Network. While I've been sick with the shingles, we have in, I have done so much work, I can't even tell you how much work I've gotten done. It's unbelievable. We're going to be stepping it up, and we're going to be providing you every tool that we could possibly provide you so that you can be an amazing disciple for Yeshua. Not for us to be a disciple for Yeshua. My discipleship, my, my role in your life, if, if, it, if it be God's will, if, if I can play that role, if I can be your brother in this way, it is to provide you with tools. Just the tools. And if you have those tools, then ladies and gentlemen, you are the hero of the day. You are the hero. You are the shepherd in the people's life who you are interacting with. My job that I've been given, I know, is to provide as many tools as possible and along with the Bible read every single week, tomorrow is Testimony Tuesday. We're going to give a testimony tomorrow. We're going to start doing weekly prayer. There's so many tools that we're going to be offering right here, right now. It's already started. We're already revving up. These things have already begun. But it's about you. And, and I, know that, I know that a lot of people who've come up in the church and been raised in the church, it's all about somebody standing on a stage or it's all about that like elite clique in the church that go out and do the good or the, or the missionaries who go out and, and build the churches and like they're the ones doing the good and, and you're just kind of cheering them on. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not here. Not here at Yeshua Network. That's not what the gospel says. That's not what the gospel says at all. It says every single one of you are to be disciples of God. And to be a disciple means that you're a maker of other disciples. That's what the definition of disciple is. You are a maker of other disciples. You follow his footsteps. That makes you a disciple. And what he did was made disciples. So if I can provide you the tools as much as I can, and there's plenty of other tools all over the internet. I'm not saying I'm, we're the only group of people providing tools. There's, there's wonderful people providing amazing tools. But if I can provide you more tools to empower you even more, then I'm doing my job. But notice what I'm saying. And I can't be more clear on this. My message to you is you are the disciple. You are carrying the Holy Ghost. And you are the one who's going to touch that person's life that you may not know you are part of saving from being a murderer or being a lost soul or being a doomed soul forever. You are that person. And I know that maybe you've never been told that before. And I know that, that maybe that message has never been the message of the church you go to, but that's the message of the gospel, and that's the message of Yeshua himself. You are no different than the apostles, guys. Greater is he who believes and has not seen. Greater. Greater. That's you. And I know that's hard to believe, but it's only hard to believe because the devil's been whispering in your ear the exact opposite your whole life. But he is a liar. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, May the Lord bless you, and may he keep you always. We look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow, right here at Yeshua Official, for Testimony Tuesday. Thank you very much for all your kind words and praying with me tonight. Talk to you soon.